Marked. And I'm going to look up that study because it was really cool and I don't want to give you misinformation. So, so chat, help us out. The Somniocidae. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, eye is not quite as big. Mm. What do you got? Somniosus pacificus. Apristurus? Yeah, but I can see the the tail uh, very well, so I don't uh, know. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, it looks like this one. Are you checking something out too, Paula? Are you? What yeah, do you have like on, the on top? Samantha's. Some new specificus. Specificus. Uh, The tail is a bit longer yeah, on the upper. Yeah, it's hard to tell. The eye looks bigger on this shark too. I think there is so something by parasite. its eye. Yeah, yeah, I think something yeah. is by its oh, eye. Oh, okay. That might be. Oh, uh, Jelly. Is that a jelly fit? Alright. Yeah, I wish, the, I wish the animal guide had some um, oh. dimensions. I think that was the first one. Somniosus pacificus. What do you guys think? Here's a close up on the eyes. Oh. Could be. Yeah, that yeah, looks, yeah. That looks like it. That one even has lasers. Look at the Lorenzini ampules. Yeah, that's a really cool photo. Are those 10 centimeter lasers? Because that, so that, that would be a normal. That would be a big shark, yeah. I don't think that that's. That makes me think that's not the right one. That's why these are so hard when we don't have any scaling on these photos. Could be a pristurus, but there's not a good picture of the tail. Yeah. On that one. Yeah, the guide is a little sparse on sharks. This one looks smaller, but it's really hard to see. Right tail shape. Yeah, probably you might be right about the tail being longer. Yeah. Jules, is the cleaner ras fish? Yeah. During the mer test? Okay. So I found the paper. It was published in Nature. I'm trying to oh. find a free version of this. Go to. But uh, it suggests that fish what? might have some level of self awareness. Mm. Oh, wow. Um, mm. Let me find the abstract. <laughs> Okay, there's like a, a the very brief summary is the the blue streak cleaner wrasse attacks composite images of its own body and another fish's head, but not pictures of its own head on another fish's body. So that's not the study I was talking about. That's another one. Huh. There is one with parasites too. Um, cleaner fish with parasite tattoos will try to scrape them off if they catch sight of themselves in a mirror. Oh, parasite tattoos. <laughs> it's weird. Especially weird when you bring your fish into the tattoo parlor. You're like, what time we get a bail? Eleven forty-five. Forty-five minutes from now. Should be dropping a little bit here soon. Bridge now. Uh, three zero meters, two nine zero, please.
Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Adam, would you like to explain the pattern in the sand? Mm -hmm. And please, that's <laughs> one of the questions from chat. Perfect. Yeah. Once a day. Once a day. Uh, so these, we're looking at ripples, and you're probably familiar with this same pattern that you can see kind of in shallow water in a estuary or right. at the beach, and it forms when there's current moving across the seabed, um, moving the tiny grains of sediment, and they tend to pile up in these ramps and then fall over down the downside. And they have a characteristic uh, shape, so both the, the wavelength from peak to peak and the amplitude from the trough to the crest that is related to the speed of the current and the physical properties of the sediment. So we could pick up this sediment, we could take a close look at it, and then say something about current speed based on the, you know, the, the shape of the, the ripples. But you see they are not all like parallel lines. They get kind of complicated and, and convoluted in some places. So it, uh, they're, they're moving. They're constantly moving. Too slow for us to see, but they are moving across the seafloor, and, and you get really interesting kind of interferences between ripples of different wavelength and shape as they kind of bump into one another and get these complicated patterns. Right. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for explaining. Um, <laughs> this is a question about our watch. Um, this is a previous question. Does each watch have their own name? I think the other one was Benthic Divers. It's Halasaur. What was that? Like, does each watch have their own name? Yeah, but the name is not precious. It can change. We were the Metallogorgeous watch yeah. initially, but now I think that's faded. What are we now? Are we well, now? chat. We're pretty uh, much team. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> chat. I just tuned in. I I love when I turn on the stream and I see my favorite chaos crew. <laughs> chaos also crew. been referred to as the ADHD wow. crew. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Stay away from my dirt clod. <laughs> <laughs> what depth are we at? We're at 1,500 pretty oh, much. Okay, thank you. Bridge now. We can add another three zero meters to this two nine zero. When are we looking to um, launch again? Uh, not entirely sure. We probably okay. need to do a little mapping. We need to put the laser on uh, dive bot on the vehicle and get into position so ah, okay oh, probably well, this afternoon will we be using the the laser again on yep. the next step okay mm -hmm. cool nice. Paula, I need to take over the capture computer for just a little bit. The capture computer? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Do you need to release it? Does I've, pump I've got it. I'm okay. Take care of it. I have a 
a script that's failed. And then, how much of the sediment is exposed to organic matter? Hmm. I guess maybe I would phrase the question, how much of the sediment is organic matter? And the answer is, I don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily know <laughs> the answer to that, but there's definitely some organic matter in the sediment. Um, um, oh, sorry. Yep. Oh. I was going to add that about 10% of organic matter uh, floating through the water column, the marine snow, makes it to the bottom of the ocean. Okay. Oh, so, oh, thank you, Megan. So, 8 p.m. is the next planned launch time. Blue water. Okay. Oh, shoot. I have a previous commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday night plans. Yeah. Where <laughs> to be? That's interesting. We're getting a bunch of watches in a row now, huh? Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> As opposed to what? Not having. Well, sometimes a bunch we're of not in the water. Oh yeah, you guys get watch. a break. You just don't get a break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I call that hammock time. You know, I just oh, like man. refresh <laughs> and. But the you know the spa up at the front of the ship where they get a, I get a facial and a. Manicure. <laughs> Adam's <laughs> daily massage. <laughs> you could probably sell the salt spray facial. You just have them stick their head off the side of the ship when we're underway. Right. I mean, you have, have you guys um, heard about people selling air from where they're at? Like they literally yep. capture air from their area and sell it on like eBay. Okay, Paula, no. you can take capture back. Oh, yeah, she, they she do disappeared. That. I'll let her know when she comes back. Okay. Huh. Why? I'm going to yeah. sell air. That's it was so once. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was, um, yeah. I don't know. People actually air. buy. I buy compressed air to clean stuff off that's mm. handy okay i gave capture back to her okay oh there was a xeno 504 actually there were a bunch of them here yeah yeah, yeah. Passing over. i like that word xeno 504 it's fancy very science yeah sciencey all right robert can you find something interesting here yeah this feature isn't uh let's crack up to be not <laughs> screaming to me Hey Dave, we're uh, I think we're missing high pack. Oh wait, you don't no, have it either. No, uh, Data Lab has high pack right now. Oh, it will come back soon. You know the canned air? They've started adding adding a uh, bitterant agent agent to it. Why? So, uh, I guess people were abusing it for air. But like we we use the canned air and turn it upside down to like make a freeze mist mm -hmm. to like check electronic components, see if they're getting too hot. And, um, and that stuff will run you out of the room, like, if you do that. It's like, hmm. Isn't it, well, what's in the air? It's I just don't, air, I don't know, right? No, it's not just air, it's some... Nitrogen? No, like some fluorocarbon thing. Oh, boy. Yeah. Bridge, no? What the heck? What? We People can add another three zero meters to like two capturing zero. air, putting it in these little jars, <laughs> and selling them <laughs> for like 50 bucks. 50 bucks? You should see the and one it's they like, they like fresh air, like clean mm -hmm. air. You should see the one, um, they're actually selling air from the Taylor Swift concert because it's the same <laughs> air she breathed. No. They're actually oh, selling, no, nah, this is, yeah. People are like, oh, it's the same air. I was there at the concerts, breathing the same air she did. So, yeah, here but it is. she's she's like one one millionth. Yeah. There's a lot of other people breathing <laughs> that yeah, air. Yeah, yeah, but they actually sell. No. Or even the um the little confetti. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can okay, sell. It's that's amazing what you far. can sell. So much. Oh. 
Oh, and then we have, uh, on the flip side, so recognizing taxa seems like a skill that takes practice. Roughly how many hours would you estimate you spent visually identifying <laughs> the taxa of a specimen? Oh, God. <laughs> it could be a specimen or a rock, you know? Um, like, in, Dave? You've spent countless hours. Okay, so in undergrad, I was working on Brian's project. I was annotating deep sea footage from a Falcor expedition. And I spent um, upwards of 60 hours on those annotations. Oh, wow. And then this I've been working at the Museum of Comparative Zoology for the past uh, several months coming up on a, mm. anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even know how many hours I've spent looking at things and um, narrowing down identification, updating identifications. But I can tell you that I say I pretty much start from scratch every mm. cruise. I don't really remember all the oh, IDs okay. from before. And so then over a period uh -oh. of 12 hours, <laughs> Here we go. I would say you can get pretty proficient at identifying these things. Oh, yeah, okay. when you see the same things over and over, like it really doesn't take too long. Like I have like learned a bunch of new sponges and right. just because we had one dive with a ton of sponges. So it really is about repetition. There's, you know, not necessarily a, a special skill to it. Uh, attention to detail Focus. is important. Fo right, right. Focus. Thank you. Wait, uh, oh, 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 is this go. the same? Extrusion. Okay, it's a little more oh, normal size. Ooh, a backflip. Oh. It's a backflip. Okay, hi. This one's, oh. He wants to come really to moving. Us. We've seen all the cool right. holotherians. Yes, we have. I'm still blown oh away God. by that massive one. That yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really like, I enjoy seeing How them come on this swim. <laughs> there is supposed to be an interesting feature up here. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's there. It's coming. Somewhere. We'll get there right in time for the next watch. Or Actually, no, we're going to leave the bottom before we... Uh, or it's an artifact in the bathymetry. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder. When we get high pack back, we'll take... I mean, we can take another look, but I think we've seen what we can see. Are we going up where it's a slope, or is this a sand flat? It's supposed to be flat and then go down into a little... Uh, Crevasse. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mystery hole. Mystery <laughs> hole. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is going on? Uh, Data Lab has high pack right now. Isn't that a place in Oregon, or is it Mystery Cave? Mystery Spot. Mystery uh, Spot. There's Mystery Spot in California and Santa Cruz. I think there Local are a lot of mystery peak. places. I don't think there's a mystery hole. <laughs> I think we're about to find it. I think, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps. Bridge nav. Take us to the mystery hole. <laughs> to the mystery hole. From local peak to mystery hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three zero meters can local be added to two nine zero. Mystery zero. hole. What do I think is for lunch? What did we think? I have no idea. I was so happy we had burgers again last night. And then hopefully tacos tomorrow. We'll see. We need to manifest. Yeah, there haven't been any tacos yet. I don't think we're getting tacos, guys. No. Has there been an expedition where tacos were available? Uh, some out of Mexico, maybe? I would, I would remember that, <laughs> I, I think. Fish. The avocado has been sliced differently recently. Thanks, Data Lab. And I wish it was still in cubes. But I am grateful for the avocado. 
Yeah, it's we're getting very exciting when that's out there. Close to what should be the interesting part of this when we're really well, we're about halfway there. Oh, mm -hmm. how come we can't see that? Who's we? Never mind. There we go. Oh. You got a high pack back? Got a high pack back. <laughs> back to pack. Perfect, thanks. Oh, chat wants to know. Uh, would you explain the laser, what it is used for, and how it went from testing to a legit scientific instrument? That's a good question. Um, the laser is used for measuring the uh, kind of both the physical and the chemical properties of the material that it is interacting with or exciting. So it has two kind of modes. One is Raman spectroscopy, which um, where materials based on their crystal structure will um, emit energy at very specific wavelengths. And then a fluorescence mode where uh, the light emitted by the, that fluoresces from the material will occur across different wavelength bands so you can you know definitely see not just what it's hitting but everything in its path so you see water in its path you mm -hmm. see dissolved chemicals in the water and you can see the stuff that is on the seafloor and I think it is still in um, kind of a prototype mode this is the first time it's ever been deployed on a mobile platform and we're still learning about what it can tell us about the C4. So this has been a really exciting uh, expedition for that purpose. And what we'll do is, you know, collect samples that, that it is lasered, for lack of a better word, and, you know, measure them back on shore and see how the measurements made out here relate to the chemistry of the material. Right. And then, you know, it's a step along the way to, towards becoming a, a tool for science. Thank you. And I found out that uh, Raman spectrum, spectroscope, whatever it is, has <laughs> nothing to do with noodles, which is uh, <laughs> right. disappointing. Nothing to do with noodles, chat. <laughs> yeah, Raman was a, a scientist who discovered oh. this technique or developed this technique you know more, uh, at least a hundred years ago it's a it's a it's been around a long time oh but, wow okay um, hasn't been applied to the deep sea very often I did not know that it up. I like to look at it sometimes. <laughs> hmm. Bridge nav. I feel we have moved a lot this in this Me watch. Me too. I would like to know how <laughs> Yeah, Let's I would add also a like five zero to meters to two nine zero. Fingers crossed. Our average. Mm -hmm. Nav says. <sighs> nav says. Yeah, Nav's uh, <laughs> not available. <laughs> <laughs> We just keep calling though. Nav science. Nav science. <laughs> nav science. Nav science. Okay, y'all. So I think we started. Yeah, here. right there. Yeah, I agree with that. Wow. That is. Well, hold on. Six hundred and ninety meters. Okay. Follow our path because we we did a little curve in there. Plus. Uh, 
A 690, whoops. Okay, and this move is gonna be 50. So at the end of this move. Oh my God, how? This can't be right. <laughs> at the end of this move, we'll have moved 1,096 meters. Yes! What? We did awesome. it! We did it! First we best. did it. Let's go. Which means... Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Our very best. And it's been... Oh, let's say... Th yeah. So we've gone over 300 meters an hour. Wow. Nice. I don't even recognize it. Come on. <laughs> Come on, chat. That's a personal best. Chaos crew. <laughs> Chaos crew. <laughs> No one knows what we'll do, not even us. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm so proud of us. Wow. Least of all us. Wow. <laughs> Still holding out for team let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I like chaos I like crew. Chaos. Yeah, and no, then yeah, one, of, one, of the, um, <laughs> one of the viewers tuned in and said team Zoom and Dave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Team Zoom, Zoom and Dave. Dave. <laughs> Zoom and Dave. <laughs> That's yeah, gotta be the intonation. Zoom in, Dave. No. <laughs> zoom in, Dave. That's I, think it. It, I think it's a little faster on the front end. It's like zoom in, Dave. <laughs> zoom yeah. And sometimes zoom it's just in, zoom in, Dave. In. Dave. <laughs> uh, how does it? Humbled. Can oh, you say it again, chat. please? <laughs> Not till there's something to zoom on. We don't want a false zoom. Where's the shrimp? Right the there. Right. Oh, yeah. All the way down. All the way down. All the way down. It's another of our, it's our slogan. Can we uh, zoom in, Dave? There we yes. zoom in, Dave. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was shrimp. perfect. Just feeling. Dude, I got hermit crab in a race all the way. Look at this guy. Molasses. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then chat is like, uh, hopefully in the right direction. Hopefully we went in the right direction. Oh, come on. <laughs> yes, we did. Have some faith. Yeah, come on. At Atlanta, are you going to the beach or something? <laughs> <laughs> I have my sunscreen on. What Just if playing lifeguard. You're like almost That's there all. down with her. Are we, are we going? <laughs> Let's go. Where are we on moving? We're in the middle of a move. It looks like we're in, just in place. <laughs> the ship's moving. I don't know what y'all are doing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What I'm using Hercules' oh, lights pattern. for a tanning bed. Oh, <laughs> oh, Maybe. Did Hercules make an extrusion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. lots, of, lots of flocculents in the area. I think that was actually at Atlanta that did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Atlanta. Yeah, directed blast from the thruster. <laughs> <laughs> Turbo blast. <laughs> what was the species that had that scientific name, Turbo something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, to what? Turbo. Oh, oh yeah. Turbo. I don't know. Was it a worm? There's a little polyoptagon mm. doing hanging out up here. Mm. Is that a polyoptagon? Zoom, zoom in, in Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not. I don't uh, know what that questionable. one is. No, it looks kind of. It looks stocked. More like a. Uh, Let me look, look, look at my notes. A sponge. Um. Could be hyalinema. I don't know. Hyalinema was, that was, was really, like bally. That was a really out there suggestion. Um, no, I really think it could be. Look at worm. that little worm coming through. Oh, break dancing. <laughs> yeah. I want to listen oh, to wow. what that worm's that listening like to. That looks like hyalinema. Right. Oh. Take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Science, is there any interest in trying to push core again? Or are we oh. moved on from there? I don't think we'll have success, so okay. let's just keep moving. Look, look. Yep. We have 
twenty six like minutes left of the watch, so I thought now's the time that you want to collect something. But no, no, that will be. Some viewers shooting to get to the hole. Yeah, I we want to get to the hole. The mystery hole. We're just we're so close. Full speed ahead. We're Give it the zooming. beans. <laughs> beans are being given, but. <laughs> oh, chaos crew specific bingo card. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> And the holotarian right in the middle. Mm. Okay. Don't even stop and look at this thing. <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> We're concentrated. Bullshit posse. <laughs> Bridge nav. Uh, let's add five zero meters to two nine zero. At point eight knots. Did they Three hear that? knots. <laughs> <laughs> What's the fastest we would go? We're going down slope. Yes. Um, oh. If we were off bottom, I don't know. What's your tow speed and knot? Two knots. Uh, what is our limit? I don't know if it's two knots. Probably a knot. And a half. We're trying to make it to the whole chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. We're trying to. The hole is the goal. The, the hole is the goal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the hole is the goal, chat. Connor thinks that was a Saracolophus. <sighs> Saracolophus. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. But, 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 what? but. We're going down slopes. So. I know. You want to switch? Well, I gotta wait on you. Oh, Eve. Oh, Eve. You know. Oh, go, go. <laughs> the ship's moving. There's only so much I can do. Where's that look land again? Look at it kicking up the dirt. Oh, oh come on. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's what a mess. Look, look what oh my mess. God! What's see happening? Go. Oh. You can see it. Look. Oh, uh, yep. It's the Special fact wave. of life. It's the <laughs> 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 see all that? I see it. Yes. <laughs> Just <laughs> agree with him. It's coming at us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Why are they showing me dinosaurs? <laughs> Is that lead wrap on it? Do you see him? Wrap? No, it's the lead wrap on the tether. It's oh. kicking up the dust. Mm. There's always something else to blame. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to have an optical tether? Then you got to have batteries. Yeah, that's true. That wouldn't last very long. You had all that. You could maybe put people in it. Oh. <laughs> in the tether? <laughs> no, in the, in the tether. In the tether. In the vehicle. Right, what would we tether, call the, it? The, the <laughs> Autonomous life <laughs> vehicle now. In now. In now. <laughs> in so now. It's catchy. Al. Al. Alvin. Alvin. Yeah. <laughs> Alvin. <laughs> Oops, sorry, Bridge. Okay. Samantha, chat is curious. Have we made any waypoints yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not on this watch. <laughs> not on my watch. But we, uh, but we make did. our own waypoints. We made our own waypoints, yeah. Maybe the I mean, beat our personal best. Maybe the real waypoints were the um, journey. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, the about sponges. The we the memories we made along the way. Yeah. Exactly. Waypoints in our hearts. Is that Robert Frost? The holotherians <laughs> that pooped along the way. Why is this taking so long? Are we gonna make it? Are we gonna make it like within 20 minutes? No. 
Maybe. If the hole is the goal, we're not making it. No! What? What would it take to get to the hole? We could stay down another hour. Yeah, at least. <laughs> Oh. Fish. Tripod. We're still waiting, so can you zoom in, Dave? <laughs> That's a different <laughs> one. <laughs> that one seemed more questioning. Yeah. Than that. <laughs> Seem more Is urgent. Is that in your bag yeah. of tricks? Seem more Dave? urgent. <laughs> oh, hi. The yeah, answer is yes. It's battle damage there. Yeah. yeah. Very stout. Authentic battle damage. Huh. Oh, what are the That seems like a, a bit of a health issue with that. Yeah. One. <laughs> health concern. Health concern. Ooh, very snake-like. Yeah. We going? Let's go. I'm still go. moving. Or halfway through that step. Yeah, we're not really going down as we were. Kind of leveled out. I predict a steep <coughs> drop off. Mm. Any moment now. Adam, do you have uh, MB proc on your KVM? Uh, yeah. Deb had it loaded on there, but it's pretty much what we're seeing anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's a bunch of concentric contours. There should be something there. This is a good example, though, of how sometimes you have to ground truth it. Yep. You know, it's a win whether we find the hole or not, because we've furthered our knowledge of the area. Mm -hmm. Well, we have 10 minutes before we're supposed to come off bottom, so. So we'll, we'll, see. we'll go, f we'll see what we reach in 10 minutes. Is that, is your time estimate? Uh, at this depth, yeah, we've got a 74 meter or 74 minute uh, ascent. Okay. So, yes. Bridge mm, now. Big. Yep. Let's add uh, three zero meters to two nine zero. Mike, what was the spike on that one? Uh, spike on that one. Our max spike at the moment right now is uh, 10,583. Okay. Yeah. Huh. I felt worse than it was. I think that one was only like 9K, right? That one was over 10. It was. Yeah. Oh, the... Grafana doesn't give you as much detail as you got. No, the southern, the southern logger is a lot faster. Grafana is kind of pokey. It's more comforting, though. This is averaging. <laughs> <laughs>
What's our, uh, Samantha, what's our total depth relative to what is predicted? Uh, how do you mean? So HIPAC says we should be at about whatever depth, and we are at Oh, uh, we don't have depths on high back. <coughs> oh. Um, <coughs> if we were near a waypoint, I could tell you based on the cross-section of the dive plan, but... Hmm. So do, but do you have a map load and this thing doesn't it give you the depths? Uh, have that fancy setup? I don't think I so. I think you just load an image in there. I don't think... Yeah, oh, you can. I think, no, this is the new. new so improved. you can, yeah, you you can still load an image or you can load a grid. I don't know what we've been loading. Uh, we've been loading images. Uh, yeah. 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 You want to put a waypoint on high pack local depression? <laughs> <laughs> Just inside the van. <laughs> Are we almost there? How do you feel about that, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it makes me think of my mother. <laughs> <laughs> local depression. Be a good band name too. Yeah, kind of a uh, goth band. There is a band in when I was growing up called Fits of Depression. What? I grew up in a really crazy music scene in Olympia, Washington, at the peak of grunge. Yes. Slater Kinney. Slater Kinney. I used to see Nirvana at like mm -hmm. house parties instead of Whoa. concert venues. Nice. Wow. Soundgarden, Mud Honey. That was awesome. Okay, I got you. Okay, science, we've got uh, seven minutes before we're yep. supposed to be off bottom. So oh, we'll just run those seven out. Mm hmm. So. Okay. Bridge nav. Let's add another three zero meters to two nine zero. So Adam, um, can you explain to our viewers um, how are rocks processed? How do you process rocks? Yeah. So when we get uh, when we sample these rocks, you know, the first thing we do is we pick them up and we take a image of them so that we get a good picture of what they look like. Um, but we honestly at, at that stage don't really know what the rocks are because they're all coated with this iron manganese crust. So when they come up, uh, we do an initial description of the rocks, basically how big are they, kind of how much do they weigh, what do they look like on the outside. And then we have a, a rock saw set up on deck. And so that's a, it's basically a tile saw that people who lay tile would use. It has a, a specialized blade that um, is coated with uh, diamond dust around the edge. So you're not actually slicing the rock. You're, um, uh, you're kind of grinding it away. Okay. And so we push the rocks through this, this rock saw, and then we get a look at, at what's on the inside. And so we go through a process of describing the rocks. Um, on this expedition, we've seen a lot of volcanic rocks, basalt, so we describe how many vesicles are in there, what kind of crystals are in there, right. how altered they are, how thick that iron manganese crest is. Uh, but we've also seen lots of other types of rocks, so um, sedimentary rocks, basically, either made up of volcanic material or carbonate material from the, the top of these seamounts when they were near sea level. And some rocks that 
that we you know can't really fully describe so once they're um, described and, and imaged we take pictures of them and uh, we bag them up and we'll send them back to shore where uh, more scientists will get a chance to look at them in a lot more detail amazing thank you so much Oh, um, and then this is a question from chat. Where does the manganese crust uh, coating come from? So it comes directly out of the seawater. It precipitates from seawater, and it's made of the two main components are iron and manganese. But there's lots of trace components of rare metals that uh, that exist in the in seawater in very low concentrations but over time get concentrated in these crusts. And so uh, elements like cobalt and, uh, and uh, lanthanum and terbium, these are all metals that we use. Everyone's got some in their pocket, in their iPhone, and they're in wow. solar panels and, and electric car batteries right. and, and all manner of electronics. Uh, they're in fairly short supply. Uh, we're, we're kind of using them up on the surface of the earth, so there's lots of ways to get more. We can do a much better job at recycling what we've used already. There's some land-based resources, but the ocean is being looked at as another uh, resource for that metal as we move into a green economy future. Thank you. So it looks like this is about yeah. all we're going to see. <gasps> yeah. Mystery hole. We'll remain a mystery. a mystery. Local depression it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the map now. It's on our high pack map, not in any real map. Okay, well, we still have uh, 22 meters left on this step in three minutes. So. Oh, and then we, we do have viewers tuning in from uh, classrooms. We have students and educators. Uh, can we elaborate? Can we talk about our internship programs? Yeah, of course. One sec. So the Nautilus has five internship programs. Is that right, Samantha? That is. Yes. So I am this expedition science intern and I get to shadow most of the scientists and the work that we do here in real time. And it goes beyond working in the control band, doing data logging. So everything that we're able to identify, I make sure it's on record. And then as outside the control band, I also help with the in the wet lab processing samples. So everything we got on this dive, as soon as the ROVs get back on deck, we rush to the ROV and then get the samples and process them. And we also have beyond the science internship, there's engineering internships, there's a communication fellowship, which Annie can tell us more about. And there's also video engineering. Is that right, Samantha, right? Uh, yeah, video engineering, ROV engineering, there we ocean go. science, seafloor mapping, and navigation. Ooh. And so um, I do have a question on the, so each of like RV piloting, uh, v video engineer, navigating, um, you guys train interns? Yeah, correct. The um, interns are immediately part of our expedition team. Right. So they sit a watch. Um, they're partnered with uh, junior and senior members of the team as mentors um, and are, you know, sitting a watch in the control van. They're uh, maintaining vehicles or camera systems, they're processing samples in the data lab. Um, so it's super hands-on, um, kind of immersive internship experience. Um, and then we also uh, also open applications for junior and senior contractors on the team too. So if folks have a little bit of experience at sea or in fieldwork environments, um, that's also a great fit. And you can explore all the different careers um, and roles on board Nautilus on the Nautilus Live website under the team page. You can see everyone who's on board this expedition and also 
uh, click through the different careers um, that we highlight. Um, each page highlights um, the kind of skills and responsibilities of each um, each role on board, and then also some of the pathways to get to those roles. Right. Thank you so much, team, um, for everyone tuning in. Um, go to nautiluslive.org for more information. And we are at 11.45. Uh, right, 11.45. Chad, the next scheduled dive is at 8 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Thanks for sticking with us. You folks have been amazing. <laughs> are we going mm -hmm. off the bottom? Is that it? Mm. Oh. Science? Just yeah. 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 <laughs> Just off in the distance, I think, is a <laughs> mystery <laughs> hole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Always how it is. You gotta leave something for the next explorers. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's Handing it up. off to the next generation. Okay, so team local depression. <laughs> oh wow. Signing off. <laughs> Sounded so sad. Yeah, let's see one of those. <laughs> Are you looking for an answer to that question, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> I'd just try one and see. That's not going to help. Okay, well, that ship move's done, so. Por arriba. <laughs> Nos fuimos. Atlanta. Fish. Fish. You're all going to sort out the tether first? Yeah, he's doing it. Great. It's happening. It's happening. It's happened. Here we go. Here we go. Off bottom. <laughs> Yay. We. Off bottom. 21.47. So close. Yes, so far. <laughs> Switching over my vest. Yes, blast it out. Let's Eight hours from now, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. chat. For our folks at home, thank you so much for sticking with us. Um, check out nautiluslive.org for our highlights. Our team just posted our highlights. Uh, with the narco medusa, we've let this jelly has was last seen eight years ago, and we've spotted it about three, four times on this um, cruise. So, so it's pretty exciting. So check that out. And shout out to uh, oh, okay, shout out to Oregon and Netherlands. Thanks for tuning in. Bridge now. glimpse to the bottom. Uh, we started our ascent to the surface with a surface time of 1300 for recovery. Mm. Which I should have waited until we were actually going before yeah, saying that. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood. So we said we got a lot of rocks, so we'll, we gotta... Should start raining any moment then. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it was looking really nice out, but. Oh, yeah. Where does it look? So bad for the next watch. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your oh watch. Fortunate.
At least it's only one hour. They're not getting the whole watch on blue water. Oh, can you take your auto head off? Perfect. Wow. So take my auto head off. Perfect? Yeah, it's actually 20 meters a minute. That's what I, I calculated on. That never happens. Oh, chat wants to know, what's the weather like out here? I'm watching from Ireland. You can imagine what it's like. I'm sorry, I've never been to Ireland, so. It's very Let's sunny, see, beautiful. Temperature. Do we have that on the weather watch? Oh, weather watch. It's been quite humid. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Very humid. It's kind of hovering around 80 degrees, 82. Which I looked up and it's like that all year round. Like yeah. it never budges off of that. Mm. That's so nice. There's a shot of the back deck. It's sunny and warm. Ooh, like Ooh, let's go. <laughs> I remember outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, Jack Frog moment. is being featured right now with a big smile. Oh, yeah. Different smile than it was earlier, though. TJ's really on it. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Oh, wow. <laughs> Channel 3, going live. <laughs> <laughs> You cannot unsee that. Wait, speaking of deck, so who found the flying fish? I think Megan. Was it recent? It was yesterday. I think. What? Few. Yeah, I saw one a yeah, week or two ago. Of... So, like, did they throw it back in the water? I don't know. They're like RIP. I think it had already oh, been yeah, they're dead. out for a while. Oh. Yeah. Yep. When we get enough of them, we'll have tacos. <laughs> Flying fish is pretty good. What? It's really? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, we can that's feed them to one of the boobies that's been flying Bar around. Barbados has got the flying fish sandwiches. They're really oh, good. Oh, wow. How do you cook yeah. them usually? I don't know. I don't I don't make them. I just eat them. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Do you uh, look at the food before you eat it or just just like it just goes in? <laughs> is it bread? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 They take all the bones out. So yeah, I don't, you don't notice any bones. I don't know. We're good. Malolo. Malolo. I mean, they're not all the little tiny ones anyway. Some are, you know, like a foot long. Hmm. They're common. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, Adam's being sent to the principal's office. <laughs> You're on TV. <laughs> I like the comment from a viewer that said, uh, oh, where'd it go? We need Dave to zoom in on the hole. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Could have made it there. <laughs> There's another one too. Even my awesome powers sometimes uh, <laughs> are not up there. to the task. Oh, Robert, are you looking at some in a drawing? Here you go. <laughs> oh, man. Mm hmm. Next time. 
Thanks, chat. Uh, you guys have been amazing. We are now on watch change. 8 to 12, signing out. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is the 12 to 4 watch crew joining you live from the Central Pacific. Um, some of us are still coming in. I don't know whether it's going to be Dwight or Leela. I'm assuming Dwight. I don't know. Probably Dwight. We are just ascending now. Our dive is over for uh, today. I think... I didn't see when we're diving next. Um, I'm going to assume either later tonight or tomorrow morning. I would assume later tonight. Hey, front row, would y'all care if I snapped a picture with you guys for my takeover day? <laughs> I don't mind, but I don't know. I'm good. <laughs> huh? like a selfie type picture? Yeah, well, it'll be like like a group one, so it's like more just like, I'll be like this, so you kind of just look <laughs> and smile. It wouldn't be like an individual. <laughs> gotcha. I'm just trying to think. When would be a decent time if it would be when we're on the surface, so. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Unless
unless we get to a point that Michael feels comfortable, but if not, that's okay for a pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much we'll just look back like that. That's what you're thinking. Well, like I'll come up there and then like I'll just be like this. So you just kind of oh, look at the camera gotcha. real quick and then okay. snap. What do we got in our box? What did we yes. collect? So we have four eDNA samples. Um, we have some bamboo coral, more bamboo coral, some coral branches, the little jelly we had collected. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five rocks, uh, primnoid. That is, I think, unknown from Norwood. And then okay. we have a Chrysogorgia. Okay. Chrysogorgia or Chrysogorgid? Chrysogorgia. Okay. That's what they wrote. Okay. That it might cool. be. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. What's Are we currently ascending right now? Yes. Okay. I'll just fix that in the update. <laughs> What did you think we were doing? <coughs> we're actually just know. sitting. Yeah, Blue we're water. Just sitting in the middle of the water. <laughs> yeah, just waiting for a whale shark to come by. No, we're waiting for the megalodon. Oh, uh, the yeah. meg. Oh, now we're waiting for the meg. Yep. Mm, oh, we're gotta, waiting gotta, for gotta, Jason gotta. Statham to come beat up the meg. <coughs> actually. But they are extinct. I don't know if Dwight or Leo are coming up. Granted that it's a, a blue water watch. Blue water dive. Um, yeah. So, might just be the three of us back here. <coughs> and well, um, I guess I'll mention, I woke up this morning and I had like three texts from people saying that they were on our, four they were that we were on their For You page on TikTok with that hydrozoan jelly. So I guess we're kind of famous. <laughs> um, you guys can start, you know, choosing your agency. I'm going to start making <laughs> plans to move to LA, start my vlogging career. But I'm so glad that so many people are finding that jelly very cool. Very fun. Ah. Okay. We're going to do introductions. Um, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. So, apologies about that. I was busy trying to no. fix the updates. Are so. Welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus on the 12 to 4 watch. My name is Daniel, your SPL host. I'm Sarah. I'm the scientist. I am Loopy. I am the data logger. You can also watch what we do, if not via live. I am doing a takeover day on our Nautilus Live Instagram, so you can go watch to see a day in life on Nautilus for me. Mm -hmm. 
I am the other Sarah, but I am the Atalanta <laughs> pilot. Excuse you. Uh, Michael, Herc pilot. Uh, Cheyenne, navigator. And I'm Amber, the video engineer. Who? Told for what? <laughs> oh, you're, yeah. you're good, Daniel. You got it. <laughs> So, question of the day. What is your favorite thing that is blue? Hmm. The sea. <laughs> <laughs> sea isn't always blue. Sometimes it's green, gray, clear. Okay. Why can't you say that about any object? <laughs> True. True. Yeah. White is... Okay, the sea in the deep sea. Mm. It's always blue. Yep. Fair. Um, Technically, isn't it more black since like there's no light that penetrates deep down, so it's just darkness. Well, I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> sorry, you're on the to have <laughs> <laughs> Okay, offshore. Okay, offshore waters. Yeah. Okay. Or being on like the surface, like we are, when you go out and see the blue ocean. That's pretty. I didn't think um. that'd be so controversial. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know. Hmm. My favorite thing that's blue. I really like the sh the show Bluey. It's like hmm. a baby show, apparently. Oh, I like that show. I actually have a painting that I did of uh, Bingo. Oh my God! <laughs> See, yes. I'm not alone. But yeah, that's all I can think of. It's blue. I'd say the sky is my favorite thing. That's blue. Because you look up and it's, this, it's a good day the outside. The sky isn't always blue. Yeah, Daniel. <laughs> well, during this time of day, it's blue. And no, not if it's cloudy. Or well, not if when there's it's not cloudy. Not if there's um, forest fires somewhere. It's like gray. Mm -hmm. Well, when it's a good day, when it, it doesn't feel like the world is trying to make me sad, I like to stare up in the sky and feel, hey, it's going to be a good day. Sorry to jump in on this fascinating blue conversation. <laughs> no, please uh, do. I joined a little late, you guys, just checking in on front row here. How are we doing? Uh, obviously ascending, right? Yeah, 17 meters mm -hmm. per minute. All right, uh, cool. About an hour to the surface. All right, sounds good. You want to introduce you. yourself quick? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm Dwight Coleman. Uh, Wait, the watch our name and, yeah. The watch leader for the... Uh, for the, uh, what watch are we on? 12, 12 to 4. To four. <laughs> <laughs> I split this watch with, uh, with Leela Bellucci, and uh, she's down getting samples ready to ready. prepare the wet lab for all the samples. I think this is a pretty loaded up sample dive, yeah? Pretty much. Not too uh, bad, I guess. Yeah, not too bad. And you can watch us do samples after this, yes. if you want. And then you can watch the sonar. Yeah. Slowly change colors. <laughs> that's what we have the sea floor. Are you saying that's your favorite blue thing? Oh. Is the uh, depth range that's blue on the zona? <laughs> <laughs> no, she said the ocean or the sea. And then I got attacked for saying the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so she attacked Daniel back about the sky. <clears throat> Look at the difference in blue color between the Triclops camera and the... Quite a difference there, huh? A lot of different shades of blue. Yeah. I would say that's like my favorite blue, just like the different shades of blue. Blue is just a pretty color in general. Welcome. I think Paula did that. Yeah. Oh. Nice. 
We always have a new setup for the slurp. <clears throat> I think this one is one of the more efficient ones, it seems. Always improving things on Herc. Hercules is on this exhibition has also had a um, an instrument that we've been swapping in and out from time to time called the Laser Dive Bot. This instrument is built by a City Institute and Impossible Sensing, and it has on board a Raman spectrometer, which is a tool used by scientists to uh, understand the chemical composition of materials based off of uh, using a laser. So imagine you have, say, a tennis ball, and you want to bounce off of different surfaces. You have a table where it might bounce really high, and you have a bed where it might not bounce that high at all. And based off of uh, how high you bounce the ball, you kind of know the different materials. Same principle applies to light uh, and the photons that are in it. When it hits different atoms in a material, we get back different energies, which is read as a spectrum, and that tells us the chemical composition of whatever we're looking at. And so this instrument is currently being tested in a deep ocean, but has potential applications out in space as well. Currently on Mars, the Perseverance rover also is equipped with the Raman spectrometer, and they're looking to use this technology for potential missions to icy worlds in our solar system. Isn't the next dive going to be with the laser dive bot? Yes. Yeah, we just went down and picked it, actually, and I changed the board. You guys probably missed it. We're not going to go back in until midnight now, so we can get some more mapping done and not have to do a middle-of-the-night recovery. It'll Good be a short idea. dive, only eight hours. Oh, OK. Good work day. Midnight to 8 a.m. <laughs> Third shift. <laughs> wow. All right. Blue water part two. For about an hour and a half for your watch, and then, well, maybe two hours. About half the watch. Shouldn't be too bad. Well, tonight's dive will be shallower, so we won't have too much blue water. Right, right. But hey, maybe we'll see something fun. That's <laughs> all we can hope for. <laughs> of course we'll see something fun. <laughs> Optimi yeah. Optimism. Of well, course. We always see squid and oceanic white tips at night. True. Those are always fun. And the crowd goes wild for the sharks. Is there a, uh, shucks, what am I trying to say? The um, Hurricane Atlanta anti data for this monitor. I got it. Is there what? Sorry. I got it, I got it. Change that screen to mapping. <coughs> Sorry, Daniel, would you ask, is there Hurricane Atlanta data? For yeah, the, for this monitor. Oh, oh, I thought yeah, you said I'm, for the monument. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I'm changing oh, it. Oh, gotcha. Speaking of the monument, do we know when that decision is going to be made? That About, you question. mean the sanctuary? Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I know Comet's just closed today, I believe, or yesterday? Yesterday. I don't know what the timeline is like, though. Yep. So what we're talking about is uh, a currently on the floor for lawmakers is a potential 
National Marine Sanctuary to be placed on top of the, the Pacific Rim Islands Marine National Monument. Public comment was open until June 2nd yesterday, and this will be uh, used towards the public and lawmakers helping to establish, potentially establish, a sanctuary here. And that adds extra protections and widens the protected area within the exclusive economic zone surrounding the Keenan Reef, Palmer Atolls, Jarvis Islands, Johnson Atoll, Wake Atoll, and two other islands as well. Usually the sanctuary designation process is a couple of years, so it, yeah. won't, be, it won't be fast at all. Right. Uh, it will have to play itself out um, in the court of public opinion, mostly. <laughs> yep. Um, stakeholder meetings. Uh, yeah, I know. Like I mean, from what it seems like, they're. I think they're trying to speed up the process, but who knows? They'll need to create a sanctuary management plan, I believe. That'll be a very dense written document that will get vetted through right. all the different stakeholder groups and right. decision makers. Yep. Lots go into regulating the ocean a lot more than you think. And that's um, a big reason why the work we do here on Nautilus is important to those lawmakers. Uh, a lot of the data that we collect, they'll use in uh, helping write the laws that help regulate this area. We have to know what's here in order to know what to protect. Some of those still camera photos might grace the cover of the management plan. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like I said, getting ready for my career in photography. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> As I Kidding. go for it. It's but a good hobby to pick up though. How about your career in marine affairs? <laughs> <laughs> Not Vanity Affair, Marine v Affair. Sounds like a pretty niche career. It's important. There's a lot of uh, ways the law of the sea gets interpreted by different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the State Department has a division of uh, personnel that issue permits for um, work in other countries, EEZs, for example. Um, it's all tied to yep. marine affairs type yep. work. So as we're ascending through what looks to be nothing but empty blue water, we're actually going through different uh, photo zones of the ocean. And these different zones actually have different qualities to them. And so where we just left was called the bathypelagic. This extends 1,000 meters down to 4,000 meters below the ocean surface. And we are exploring the unnamed guillot at a roughly 2,500 meters below the ocean surface. At this depth, uh, due to constant darkness, it is also called the midnight zone, the only light Aside from Hercules and Atalanta, comes from bioluminescent animals. Animals, and we are currently ascending up through the bathypelagic and about to enter the <laughs> mesopelagic zone. Uh, we actually just entered the mesopelagic. Nice. So, yeah. So, so this zone is sometimes referred to as the twilight zone. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> so temperature changes are in the greatest in this zone because it contains the thermocline, mm -hmm. region where water temperature decreases rapidly with increasing depth, forming a transition layer between the mixed layer at the surface and the deep water. And once we get to about uh, 200 meters, we will be entering the epipelagic zone. And this is pretty much the surface of the water where you'll start to see a lot of sunlight coming through and a lot more animals swimming, swimming by. So. This is where we often find our oceanic white tip sharks and squids. We also find, as we ascend, some siphonophores and other hydrozoans. 
And whale sharks. And yeah, potentially whale sharks. So we have questions coming in from the chat, and feel free to put in your questions on nautiluslive.org as we're ascending. So one of them is, does Hercules rise to the surface by tether alone, or can it surface under its own power? So it's kind of a combination of both, where both Hercules and Atalanta are, have their own thrusters to ascend, but Hercules in particular can ascend, whereas Atalanta is kind of dragged in, I believe. And yeah, we have not only a tether attached, but also a rope that we use to pull in Atalanta and Hercules. And we uh, take in Atalanta first, and then attach the rope that's connected between there and Hercules to a crane, and then drags it around the side of the ship where we can then pick it up with the crane and put Hercules on board. And if you're curious about how this works, you can uh, uh, keep tuning in while we are as ascending to the surface. And we'll see all about how we take our RVs back on board. We're about an hour from the surface. Cool. Thanks, Cheyenne. Thank you. So we're about an hour from the surface. <laughs> and it's around 12.22 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. So we'll be getting up there maybe around 1.22 or 1.30. So I have another question about everybody's favorite thing that's blue. What's your favorite shade of blue? Like if you could pick a crayon out the crayon box, which shade of blue would you pick? Ooh. Mm. Um, I'm gonna have to Google these shades yeah. of blue. <laughs> I remember growing up there was this one shade of blue. It's not turquoise, but it's also like a little bit of a darker kind of turquoise and that was my favorite crayon to use but I forget the name of it it was always in the packs of like 20 if you get like a pack of 20 crayons I knew it was in that are you googling crayon colors I am <laughs> I am too so no <laughs> it's okay it's a, it's a type of blue. I like the turquoise and the sort of azure blue, like right. Caribbean sea blue. It's right. very nice. Um, Makes you want to go there and go swimming. <laughs> I like the cornflower one. Like the, It's like a light blue. Um, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like a light blue. I always like that. Um, the one I like, it's like a, it's like, it's called aquamarine blue. Mm-hmm. That one's really pretty. It's kind of like a teal color, I would say. Mm. Sapphire, that's a shade of blue too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Here's another debate. Is it crayon or crayon? Crayon. 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 I don't know when I. No offense to the people out there who say crayon, but that hurts my ears.
they went up on the price of crayons. You used to get a, okay, I don't want to say my age, but they used to get a pack of like, I don't know, how many do they come in a pack? I don't even remember anymore. Um, it depends, cause like some, some come with like four in a pack, some come with eight, there's like 24, it also, 64. it depends on if you get like Crayola or just the yeah. store brand. Mm -hmm. It also depends. Yeah. I like Target's art supplies, actually. They're just like norm, they're store brands. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. usually cheaper. I haven't got they're my art supplies. But not bad. I will say I like their, their paint brand in Target. It's like the llama something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see why I like it though, because it's a llama. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's like a llama name for Ooh, him. what's that? Oh. Um. Dead fish? No. I don't think. Where is it? Is it floating? <laughs> I don't think or is it dead. Swimming? It's moving. I don't know what that was though. Some sort of mid water fish. Oops, I did not. Good catch. I feel like he was either headless or he had giant lips. Yeah, that was <laughs> that head shape was really interesting. <laughs> kind of reminds me of um, oh my gosh, like what are Steven they called? Tyler of fish. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are those fish that are really well known in that one African lake? <clears throat> um, they have a lot of. Phenotypic diversity. I mean, phenotypic plastic. Oh, yeah, chicklids. I didn't say that right, I don't think. Regardless, some of them have really big lips, and that's what it re reminded me of. Yeah. Uh, cichlids? Yes, there we go. Chicklids is a candy, I think. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They're a lovely candy. <laughs> they still have chicklids? <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't think, seen them in a minute. Uh, if you ever go to Cracker Barrel, I think they still have those. Never been to a Cracker Barrel. Is that the place where they have all the old obscure stuff? Yeah. <laughs> it's like an old country mm -hmm. uh, restaurant. And right. Can't say I ever have been to one of those either. What's the issue there with the ship? Uh, it lost the ship. Oh, yeah? Just slide to the south. Huh. He's working on it. Reset. Yep, he sure is. Daniel, you still haven't found which blue one you like? <laughs> I'm still looking. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> I'm trying to think. It wasn't aquamarine because it's too light. But it was something maybe like a teal blue, but teal blue is a little too green. Mm. Man. So like maybe that turquoise is. blue? Maybe. If I could just find like a pack of crayons and just sort through them and I'll be like this is it I'll show you <laughs> <laughs> how big of a pack do you want to sort through I'd say about 24 maybe 20 oh going backwards 20? now excellent yeah <laughs> But 
There's big swells coming through. But. The shape of those things remind me of like my nephews drawing a picture when they were just really little and they like can't even hold onto the pen very well. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, my little sister's kids are 10 and 8 now. Yeah. But my oldest nephew is like. 22, which is very weird. <laughs> 22, 23, oh, 23. <laughs> ah. Every time we see these, like, little guys in... in <coughs> the blue that I'm always like go in the little scooper go in the scooper <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Okay, I think I found Thank it. Thank you. But I don't know what the name is. They don't put the names on these crayons. At least in the picture. He's going ahead now. All right. We're getting there. Front row, I have a question. What determines how fast we can ascend? Like, what's the main factor, I guess? I didn't hear the question, or who's oh, it for? Sorry. Can't really hear you very well. Can you hear me now? No. A little bit. No. There you go. Oh, <laughs> got you turned way down. Sorry. Um, how do you determine how fast we ascend? Or what factors do you look for? I push the stick all the way to 100% and see how fast it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Just pedal to the metal. Yeah. And then uh, if it's not fast enough, then we throw weight away. Right. Yeah. So when we ascend, it's, it's, uh, what's the, limited by Herx, like upward capacity, which mm. is limited by how much samples we take and stuff like that. Right, so we right. Usually how heavy? What's that? How heavy we are. 
Oh, it's hard. I don't know. Like maybe. Or, yeah, I was just saying like it depends on how heavy we are, how many samples we have, right? Yeah. Yeah. The winch can go a lot faster than that, but we don't like to have it go more than uh, what twenty-two or something at the max end. No, the winch we say thirty. Like thirties, we don't. We say thirties the limit, so we usually go for like twenty-eight or something. But then on the way up, we can never hit that. We're lucky to hit 20 meters per minute. All right. So we're going a little slower today than other days because we collected a lot of rocks. Man, come on, Adam. <laughs> Just kidding. We love our rocks. And then, um, so what does happen with the rocks once they get to the surface? So, once they get to the surface, <coughs> we will kind of, I, I would say, examine them a little bit. Like, as the scientists, um, we take pictures and just kind of like what it looks like, any uh, biodiversity on it, or so. And then after that, we don't know. We let the geology do that, <laughs> um, which I feel like, I mean, I know they cut the rocks open and stuff, um, but that's all I know. Yeah, when you when you um, cut a rock in half or slice it with the rock saw, then you can see the interior portions. So you're not looking at just the weathered or weathered crust or uh, altered crust of the rock. So you want to look at the mineral structure of the rock and the texture of the rock once it's cut, and that helps you identify it. Ooh, oh wow! Look at that! Oh Holy crap! Jelly. Tina it looks bioluminescent, almost maybe. Yeah. So the things that are sparkling are their comb gel, uh, their comb rows. That's why they're called comb jellies. Um, they use these rows to move around, and they kind of beat um, together to make that locomotion. Yeah, they're always fun to see, and one of my favorite organisms. I just love the Me jellies. Too. I'm glad we got to see one. I always wanted to see one in person. Yeah. Oh, it's in the porch yeah. cam. Yeah, they're really fun. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there Taking went. a tour around Herc. Into the thruster. <laughs> oh. oh <man>. Don't say <laughs> <Sorry>. that. <laughs> so there's a lot of comb jellies um, <laughs> during the summer. Mm -hmm. in Connecticut and if you like pick them up and if you take them up out of the water they don't hold their structure so they just look like a slime ball mm -hmm. but they're fun to play with but if you play with them too much they just like dissolve and then you try to put yeah. it back in the water and you're like ah uh, oops <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry yeah, I was like I didn't mean to hurt you I just wanted to touch you yep yeah, I think I've seen those in Rhode Island before. When I was walking Probably. on the beach, and I saw yeah. them, and just uh, no, you shouldn't mess with wildlife. But sometimes you just gotta poke it, yeah. see what it does. Yeah, there's certain there's some species can be like marine species. Some can be more freshwater. So you can find them in like estuaries, brackish water. Um, I don't know if there's any freshwater species, but definitely brackish and marine. I saw a bunch in the Chesapeake Bay when I was there. And for clarification, comb jellies aren't true jellyfish, so they won't sting you. Right, yeah. No stingers. Yeah, they're in the same, so they're cnidarians, um, but they do not have cnidocytes that are, like, developed enough, I guess, to hurt. Mm -hmm. But don't pick up a scyphozoan or, like, your true jelly. Um, even some siphonophores have really, really powerful nidocytes. So it's always best to be careful and don't touch things if you don't know what they are. And in general, just don't touch things because it's another living organism doing its thing. Well, what if it touches me? Yeah. If it touches you, I, I can't. Hey. I'm sorry. It went there first. This brings me back to Daniel's whole theory of like that snail that was fast trying to touch you and stuff. Yeah, the immortal snail. The yeah, immortal it snail. just <laughs> brought me back to that. Bless you. A oh, full circle. So I did find that crayon color. It's literally called blue green. Oh. But it's my favorite. <laughs> mm. That is a pretty color. Did you say blue green? Yes. Yeah. 
It's like is it like a dark color. turquoise? Um, that's what it looks like. I guess you can say that, yeah. You could say it's a blue-green. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a dark turquoise almost. Why not a green-blue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're at about 625 meters. We are making it. We're on our way. Really glad. Yep. So we have some uh, trivia for mm -hmm. those who are writing in, and for those of us here. So. Between gnats, jellyfish, and squids, what do they all share? Um, gnats like the little bugs. Yep. Um, well, squids and jellies have tentacles. Gnats do not. Sensory organs? I don't know. It's bioluminescence. Oh. Gnats are bioluminescent? I'm sure some species, but also like um, fireflies. Definitely. Is that a gnat, though? Let's I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I think that's a beetle, but I'm sure some species of gnat are bioluminescent. I'm intrigued. But yeah, bioluminescence is seen throughout oh. the animal kingdom, but especially in deep oceans, more so than on land. So according to Google, there is a genus of gnats, Arachnocampa, that have a bioluminescent larval stage. Huh. Cool. Very cool. So for those of you who are wondering when you can tune into our next dive, that will be 12 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, so we'll be planning for an eight-hour dive, and a short one. Mm -hmm. Now, what's our main main goal for this eight-hour dive? Do we have any, or uh, just it's do a, a quicker it's one? It's like an isolated, interesting-looking little mound that sits up on top of the guia. Mm. It's kind of one of the shallowest features of this guia, and we wanted to get another dive in using the laser dive bot. And once that instrument's on, it limits our depth range, so we can really only stay on this mound feature. Mm. So there's only so much we can do in the amount of time, so we figured oh. five or six hours is enough. Right. Yep. Hello. Mm. Ooh, fish.
very fast fish. Another Tina Four in Atlanta Cam. Tina Fours are not Nidarians, right? They are Nidarians. They're just not, um, they're a different part. You sure? On the Let me check. ID, they look like two different phylums. Oh my god, they are two different phylums. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah. Wow. Just throw me away at that point. It's all a learning curve. But they are two different phylums. Yeah, so that's why they completely do not have any nidocytes. Sorry, everyone. They're so strange, though. They look like they're supposed to be everything else, but they're not. Yeah, they're um, they're connected. So Tinafora, Tinafora and Nidaria are sister clades. That's what I was thinking of. I don't know the thing before it. I don't know if there's a name for the node before it. Ooh, nice larvacean house potentially on Atalanticam that we just passed. I'm also always wondering whether the uh, more rigid looking things that pass by, um, they kind of look like sticks those are arrow worms. I think we're still a bit deep for that, but I know they're I know they're a thing. Oh, Nidarians and Tina Fours aren't even sister clades. All right, just, 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 I'm gonna not. <laughs> Try again next time. That's just, okay. Yeah. So you get, you get a high marks for effort. I gotta, yeah. I gotta get my lecture notes out again because. Hey, we're all learning here. This is not. Yeah. This is a great learning experience. <laughs> Another Tina four. Yeah, look, I took I took my my invertebrate biology class a year ago. So it's been a hot second since I've learned all of the ways all of the jelly things um, are and how they function. But I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out the big guns next next watch, I swear. <laughs> I'm gonna be more informed. So we have people tuning in from all around the world. Of course, we got many people from all over the United States. Looks like a pretty good distribution from Ooh. east to west and north and south. Also got some books coming out here from the United Kingdom, as well as Canada, Australia, our English-speaking countries, as well as other countries within Europe, such as Scandinavia, like Sweden, Norway. 
Yeah, we appreciate y'all staying up with us. It seems like it's almost 12 o'clock midnight for you all. We are also looking at Mexico, Morocco, Spain, Czech Republic, and Denmark. So welcome aboard the EV Nautilus. Woohoo! European party over here. And we're about, uh, we're at a depth at about 445 meters. And the time, I think it says about 23 minutes or so until we hit surface. So Dwight. Yes. Daniel. Do you have any good dad jokes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a terrible joke. Teller, <laughs> sadly. Um, no, I'm not going to be good at this. Apologies. <laughs> it's all right. What does a baby computer call its father? A baby computer? Yeah. I don't know. Data. <laughs> no, I was literally thinking that too, but I was like, that doesn't make sense. Hmm. <laughs> this was kind of funny if you really think about it. I just found out I'm colorblind. The news came out of the purple. Instead of coming out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh boy. Gotta explain most of your jokes. I there, know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at not getting jokes, so I'm sorry. It's probably <laughs> me. <laughs> oh. We're rolling. <laughs> Some of these are actually really funny, but I don't know how legal they are to say on SPL. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the ocean once. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, pelagic fish. Get the little fish in. Hey. <laughs> don't see tons of fish down at the bottom here, do we? Um. Sometimes we do. Little, little One time we touched down and there was like three sharks. Really? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, they're very transitory, so it really is just luck of the draw. Usually we see more like angler fish or goose fish or mm -hmm. frog fish or. Hmm. Yeah, that fish is really. Or, yeah. Seen a few of those, I guess. Yeah, we have. That one the other night was very cute. But even usually see like chimera. I haven't yeah, seen any of those. Yeah, we haven't seen those. Um, or at least from what I know. 